All right, so let's start today. And we'll go and work on our do now first. So let's go down to 518 is today's date. Click on the Google form. And you're gonna put your name first and last. Click on your period, which is period six. And if you didn't notice in yesterday's do now, um, we have the same link. Um, but you may already know these answers right off the bat. You may not even need to look it up. But just in case, if you're not sure, click on the link right here. And you can see that the link is all about playing cards. The questions you need to answer are, what is a face card? And the second question is, what are the most common colors of a standard deck of cards? Again, you may already know these answers, so you may not even need to look it up. But if you need to look it up, the answers are right here. So let's scroll through. Here is where it talks about a face card. So this is what a face card is. And you can also list some face cards. Sometimes people include an ace with the face card. I don't think technically it is, but um, it's often people include it. And also um, sometimes people will throw in the joker with it too. And then the second question is, come back over here. You're looking for the most common colors on a standard deck for the back of the card. So we'll go down here. And here it says the most common colors are right here. Again, you may already know these answers. Go ahead and go and do the do now. Do the do now. I'll give you a minute to answer these two questions. And then when you're done answering these two questions, you're gonna come back to Google Classroom and make sure you hit the turn in button. So make sure you come back and hit the turn in button. So give everybody a minute to do that and then we'll get started on our project. Again, after you answer those two questions for your do now, please hit the turn in button on Google Classroom. All right, so let's get started talking about our project. So we're gonna be working on a playing card design. Um, we're using multiple approaches and you're thinking about the imagery and how it could apply um, differently based on your design. Your learning targets are you need to gonna be able to create a visual theme for a playing card suit. You will use multiple approaches in the planning of your playing card designs. So you'll try different things out. And then you're gonna be using um, photo editing tools that we've already used throughout the year um, in PhotoP to help you kind of make sure that your card shows what you want it to show um, to make it look like a different um, suit that relates to your theme. 
All right, so here's a little bit of uh, history about it. There are um, actually a couple of videos on here that you're welcome to watch. I'm not going to watch them with you. You can play them. They're only a few minutes. Um, but there's quite a bit of history um, related to uh, playing cards. I believe it was like uh, Asian cultures and Persian cultures had them first. Like we're talking, like this one is from um, a Chinese uh, printed playing card. This is from 1400 AD, right? So, I mean, we're looking at... Um, this has been a long-standing tradition over multiple cultures. Um, I've heard a couple different things where it said that there's some symbolism behind the kings, that the kings actually stand for Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, King David, um, and Charlemagne. That the 52 um, weeks are related in a number of cards. That the ace has uh, some religious undertones relating to the alpha and the mega or the beginning or the end. So the ace can be used as a small card or also as a big card. And that the Jokers were added um, once they came to the U.S. with different games they use here. So um, there's lots of history behind um, playing cards, um, and they're used in different ways. And again, it's changed based on the cultures who have used uh, the playing cards and, you know, the different types of games they've done. They have, like, impacted the way cards basically look today for us. And again, I'm just going to skip past the videos. You can watch these on your own. All right, so let's look at the actual card design. So there are seven parts of a playing card. Um, we'll look at the specifics in just a minute. But there's the number or value. There's the suit and then the pips that represent that suit. The picture or face for a court card. A design on the back. There's usually a border around the outside edge. Number six and seven don't really apply to us because we're not actually going to be printing. We're making our designs digitally. But the finish is whether or not your cards are kind of shiny or if they're matte. And then the stock is a type of paper or whether or not it has like a thin layer of plastic over it so that the cards are really durable. It's, it's, it's just based on the type of printing process that people go through um, to make a more durable card. So let's look at some visuals here. So the number or the value, you can see like this is a number nine. Here we have a king. And then the suit is represented with what's called a pip. So this little teeny like visual that shows you that this is either a spade or a heart. There's a border around each of them. This border is a little bit thinner over here than this one, but both of them have a clear border. Okay, and this one's a face or a court card, and you can see some reflection that's happening in this one, right? The same thing that's on top is on the bottom. It's just flipped. The suits that are in a uh, deck of cards are clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. So these are the four suits. And then the background of the design, um, that could change based on how, you know, uh, the company wants to reflect themselves. Um, again, when we look, most of the different standard card decks are either blue or red, but the design may change based on the company that's making the cards. Now, cards in general could change based on how we view and apply some artistic kind of um, creative processes. So the biggest thing for you guys is that you're going to be creating a theme. So a theme is a broad idea or a message that's conveyed by artwork, right? So they all have to have the same idea. That could be like um, maybe like the driving idea behind them is the same or the look of them is the same. Like the artistic kind of interpretation is the same. So let's look at these two visual examples up here that both show theme. This one over here has got black and white designs on the background on the back of the card is the same for all of them, like it usually is in a deck. On the front of the card, we can see these different court cards that are here. There's some similarities when it comes to the font, right? The font is the same. We can see some similarities in the way they did the shaping of some of these different elements that are on there. We see kind of this curved line, kind of repeated and separated, curved line separated, curved line separated. It even happens on the ace here. So the design of this is what makes that work together as one theme. You can see at this one right here, this bicycle one, this art playing card, they've got a little guy with a like an eyeball as like his head. <laughs> and you can see that on this one, he's riding a bicycle. This one, he's kind of floating by a heart. This one, he's kind of crawling through the spades. He's got a diamond here. But that little character is what is consistent through all of them. So there's like a look that kind of fits them all together. And then this is the back of the card, right? It all kind of fits together. It's consistent all the way through. The design of the deck is up to the person who's created them, right? So how are you gonna creatively apply these different concepts 
or what are you trying to show with the theme for your deck? So these are all individual cards here. And you can see how these do definitely do not work together. Like this card is very different stylistically, like or artistically, than this card, right? And this one would not be in the same deck as this one, right? Very, very different. So how do you make them kind of fit together? They can show different cards, they can show different suits, but they still need to kind of fit together in some way visually. And what you're going to be doing is for the next, what, four weeks, each week you'll be making a new card design. So you'll choose, you know, if you want it to be all diamonds and you want to do like the jack, queen, king, ace, or maybe you want to do a joker, or you, I'll leave it open if you want to do like the queen of hearts and the king of spades. It's up to you, however you want to do it, okay? But each week you're going to be making a new card design. The only thing that needs to be the same is the theme has to work with, with all of them, okay? So let's look at symmetry. So symmetry means it's a mirror image. So that means it's reflected in some way. So you can see this design here is reflected down here. Usually, like we'll see it where it goes horizontally across a line of symmetry here. But you may also see it where there's a dividing line going vertically too. And you can flip it however you want. So it's up to you how you want to do it. But most of the time, it's going to be this way where they're flipped on this. So that way, whatever way you're looking at the card, it can look like it's right side up. All right. So again, it's up to you how you want to balance the symmetry. There are some hidden elements that sometimes happen inside of the card designs. So you can see on this one here, it's actually two of hearts and they have a real heart in the background. It's six periods. In this one, um, you can see in the design that they have different ways of kind of sneaking in what the pip or the suit is, right? So when we look at the club one, this like hamburger is a club, right? We look at the spade, the shape that they have with all the stuff inside of it is that spade shape. This one has clubs all in the background and also on his sandwich. It's a very weird card. This one you can see in the tree she's sitting in is the same shape of the spade or the not spade, club, right? Of the club that's up here. And even on her book, you can see the club that's there. Now, if it was me, I probably would only have two flowers up here since it's a two. So it's a two of clubs. So think about how you can work the design of what the card is, like mix in the number or the face value somehow into the design of the card. So kind of work it in somewhere. So I pulled some pictures of like some different art cards. There's lots of sites that you can go to to see like some different artistically like um, driven design cards. Um, lots of people do Kickstarters when they have really interesting ideas. Um, this, these right here are all from the same site. Go back over here. So these are all from the same site. And I just put the link right here. So if you want to go to this site, there's even more there for you to look at. And this is just a little bit of Googling just to show, like if I just type in like art playing cards, you can kind of see like what themes do you like? What styles do you like? What have people done? What do you like? What moves you, right? There's tons of different ideas here. And I put some other links also in the um, description of the assignment, and I'll show you that in a minute. But here are our project requirements. So your objective is to create a playing card design for a suit of cards. It could be diamonds, clubs, spades, or heart, um, whatever conveys a central theme. So each week you'll be creating a different, and I said face card, but if you really, really want to do, for some personal reason, the eight of hearts, it's fine with me. Um, but just make sure that that's clear, you know, like in what you're working with and how you represent it. Um, but each week you're going to be doing a different face card. So either Jack, Queen, King, it could be Ace, or you can even do the Joker if you want. Um, and you need to be able to tell what the suit is clearly. All of the sizes of the card should be 10 inches wide by 14 inches tall in photo P. And you'll notice they all have borders. So we're going to start with a 100 pixel border. You can work your design into that border. So you don't have to stop at 100 pixels and leave it all white. But I just want you to separate out where your border is 
so you have one established, okay? So again, your design can work out into the border if you wanted to. Um, the suit of the car should be designed into, like the actual creative, like whatever you decide to put for your theme in the middle. Have some clear pattern or texture in the design, a color scheme that works with your theme, a clear visual message, some symmetry happening. So if we look at this, we have the reflected letter and the pip here and here. But also if you put a line down the middle, like vertically right down the middle here, this is reflected the same on both sides. Okay, so symmetry somewhere. And then overall craftsmanship. So don't do like really sloppy like selections that have them all choppy looking. Take your time, make sure it looks really nice, okay? All right, so let's actually do one together so I can show you. Um, last class I did an Alice in Wonderland one, so I guess I'll, I'll just do that again as a different theme. I'll choose some different pictures this time. So I'm gonna start by going to Photopea. And I'm gonna make a new project. Make sure you name the project, okay? Because a lot of people keep forgetting to do this and then they keep turning in new projects. You can't keep track of what projects you're working on, so make sure you name it. I'll say this is playing card. Two, since I did one earlier. You change pixels to inches. The width is gonna be 10 and the height is 14. Those numbers come from the actual size of a playing card, it's just proportionately just scaled up because we want to work with a bigger size. Okay, so 10 inches by 14 inches. And then hit create. All right, right off the bat, you notice that my ruler is turned on. If your ruler isn't turned on, go up to view and hit that check mark for the rulers. So if it's not turned on, go and turn on your rulers. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down some guides to help me and keep things kind of symmetrical and also put my border in, okay? So let's use some guidelines. So we want a 100 pixel border. So let me come over here. I'm going to click on my ruler and drag. And let's come over to 100, or as close as I can get to 100. And I'm going to click and drag one over here. So this is 700, 720. So I'll go to about 620. And then I'm going to come down from the top to about 100, and I'll come down to the bottom, and this is, what is this? About 1,000, so I'll go to 900. So I'm just kind of like watching my thing. All right, so now I have my border. Um, and again, so little, for the last one I used, Alice in Wonderland as my theme. You don't have to do, you know, Alice in Wonderland. You could do whatever you want. If you're really into, you know, soccer, you could have a soccer theme like playing cards, it's up to you, whatever you like. It's really completely open. And also I've had somebody before who for religious reasons um, just didn't want to do playing cards. That's totally fine. I've had people make nature cards, like environmental things, you know, informational cards. It, it's really open. So um, the idea of like a playing card is flexible if you have religious like reasons where you don't want to use this as a, as a project. Okay, so just let me know if that's an issue for you. All right, so let's go up and let's find some images to start. So I'm gonna go to Google. And again, I'm just gonna do this Alice in Wonderland as a theme. I'm gonna type in art afterwards, see if I get some different images this time. And always when you go to your images, you wanna have a big file size because we don't wanna like um, make a picture bigger and then it's like really distorted. So we wanna have something big to start. So I'm gonna go up to tools, go to size and go to large. So automatically, my, the quality of my images is going to be better. And then I'm just going to look and see what do I like, what do I not like. So I'm going to bring it over and kind of play around with it. There's some cool ones in here. That's really interesting there. I want to look for one that doesn't have... Um, words in it too, I because I just don't really want to have it written like Alice in Wonderland. Because I want you to be able to like pick it up like that's what you're looking at. So there's lots of art here to pull from. All 
I saw one just a minute ago that I really liked, though. This one. I'm going to choose this one. All right, so I'm going to right click and choose copy image. I'm going to come over to my project and I'm going to do edit and paste. Okay, it's super big, so I'm going to resize it. So edit and free transform. I'm going to grab the corner and I'm holding down shift. Always hold down shift so you don't distort it. Let's see how big. I think I want to keep it in the middle. So that's pretty close. That looks like perfect. All right. So I'm going to hit enter. And I, I had something similar on the last project I just made. So it's just awesome that I found a picture that's um, very close to that. Okay. So um, uh, some things that I'm thinking. So I want to reflect this. So I'm going to flip it. So I'm going to make a copy and flip it. But I need to know where the middle of my card is. So this was, what was it, 1,000? So I'm going to go to about 500. All right, I'm going to drag this down. Get it kind of close to there. Okay, now I want to have a, a copy of this and flip it. So I'm going to come over to my layers, right-click, duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to go up to Edit. And I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to flip it. I can't really see flip vertically. Hold on one sec. Let me get rid of this. There we go. So I'm going to edit and transform and flip vertically. And then I'll just make sure I'm on my move tool. So move tool and drag it down. Yeah, because I think the reflection really works with this, with the idea of Alice in Wonderland. All right. So I think I have some extra space here and here that I want to add something in. I probably want to put a color on my card too. So this kind of like smoky gray thing that's happening is kind of cool. So I think I might put a gray color in my background. So I'm going to choose some of these grays. Let's see what some of these grayish colors look like. Be a little too dark. I'm gonna play around with like that. And I think I could do a gradient, so that's a possibility, or I think I'm just gonna do a paint bucket for this one. And I wanna make sure, oops, I did it on the wrong layer. I'm gonna make sure it's on my background. So I'm gonna do a paint bucket for my background. There we go. All right, so what do I wanna do next? Now, up here, there's some filters you can always play around with with your picture. So if you haven't played around in the filter gallery, let's see if I can open this up. The computer's working really slow because I'm doing so many things at once. Hold on, let me go to one of my pictures so you can see what it does to the pictures. So I'm gonna go up to the filter gallery. And this is an option too. You can play around with some of your designs. If you want to have a different kind of effect happening, right? I could do something crazy like this to make it look more painted. And you can adjust how much of this filter is happening too. So if you only want like a little bit, so let's say we go to the plastic wrap one. Maybe I don't want so, it to be so plastic wrappy, but I want it to be a little bit. So see how I can add like a little bit to it and I can adjust it however I want. So there's options up here. So I'm just gonna close that down because I don't want that. But I'm gonna go to my background because there's another thing, I'm gonna see if I can do this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. But there's something called render and I wanna see if I can play around with some of these other things that are under render. So with render, it's choosing the orange color and kind of playing around with that. I don't really like the orange though, so I'm gonna undo that. And I'm going to choose a different color. So I'm going to choose a lighter color. And let's see what it looks like if I try that again. So let me go back to render and try the clouds. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. I'm okay with that. All right, let's go forward from there. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I think I want to add my letters. So um, the last one I did was Queen of Diamonds. I think for this one with the flowers, I can find like some roses that look like that looks like hearts. So I think I'm going to go with the Queen of Hearts for this one. So I'm going to do my type tool. And I'm just going to come up here and kind of make a box where I want my letter to go. I'm going to still keep it a queen because it's Alice. 
And maybe the next card I do, I do, you know, like the Mad Hatter and make him a, a Joker or something. So I'm thinking about my character in it. And I'm thinking about like how I want to, you know, relate that to my card. So I'm going to go up and this is where I want my Q to be for Queen. And if I look at my design, I have some swirls happening on my fence. I have kind of like this delicate flower happening. So I want something that kind of is feminine, but kind of playful. Maybe this one would work. I don't know. I'll try that. I like the one earlier that I had really fit with this. It was really fancy like this. So let's try this one. And I need a color that really stands out. So we have grays in the background. So I'm gonna choose one of these colors from in here that really stands out. So maybe like a orangey color. And again, I'm pulling the colors from my picture. Oh, a little bit darker, I think. I don't know, maybe something brighter. I'm always just testing it out to see what I like. Um, and I think I'll definitely need to be bigger than 24. So let's start with, I don't know, let's start with 80 and see what it looks like. So let me put a Q in here. Oh, that's pretty close. All right, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I like, like that. And I think I'm going to move it in. I don't want it to be right on the edge. I'm going to move it down a little bit. That's better. I also think it's too orange. I think I want it to be a little bit more red. So I just double clicked on it to select it. And I'm going to go with something a little bit more red. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, okay, I like that. All right, so once I make one, I can make my other one. But before I do that, I want to try to find a heart that looks kind of like a rose. And I'll probably bring some more roses in here to my design. So let me come over here. I want to just type in heart. Or maybe a rose that looks like a heart. See what we got. Interesting. Okay, okay. Let me go up and see what which ones are bigger, because I don't want to bring in one and have it be blurry. So we've got kind of like cartoony one. I kind of like this one with the water drops on it. I'm gonna go with that one. I'm gonna right click, copy the image, come back over here, edit and paste. Oh, that's super big. Let me resize it. Edit and free transform. So I'm going to fit it in here. I also want it to be on top of my picture. So let me move this on top of my picture. Yeah. And I think I'll move my cue up a little bit. I'm just going to be fussy about where I position them. See what I like and what I don't like. Okay, I don't like how these two like feel kind of mismatched. So I'm going to change my color so it's closer to that. So I'm going to go up to image and adjustments and try to adjust the hue and saturation. And let's see if I can get more of that orangey color. That's a little bit better already. Saturate it more or unsaturate it? Hmm. I think it just needs to be darker. Yeah, that feels, feels like it fits a little bit better. And the other thing I want to do is I think I want to play around with effects. So um, if I go down to here, we did it with our music magazine uh, project. So if I go down here to where it says effects, I think what I want to do is I want to adjust the cue and the heart and kind of do them at the same time. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and choose both layers. Let me see if I can do something as an effect to both of them at the same time. So I'm going to go down to where it says EFF at the bottom. And what happens is this box shows up and I can hit the checkbox here to kind of see what it looks like when I add some of these extra things. 
right? But if I want to adjust it individually, I can hit the word. So that's bevel and emboss. And it seems to really only be working on my letter one. Yeah, so maybe I can't do two at the same time. So I'll see what happens with my letter and see what I like, and then I'll do it to my flower. I don't mind the bevel and emboss. I think that's kind of cool. Let me see what else we have. The stroke is unnecessary. Inner shadow is kind of cool. I'm not opposed to that. And if I click on the word inner shadow, then I can adjust how much of this happens. I'm going to come back to that. I'm not sure. No. Gradient? Actually, that's kind of cool, too. Something to think about for next time. Is that mine? Yeah. Um, give me one second. I'm going to grab the phone, guys. So I'm playing around with the effects, kind of choosing one that I like. Um, so that's kind of cool too. Drop shadow, ooh, that's fun. And again, click on the word and then you can adjust how much of it. You can even adjust the distance or like the direction, right? So where do I want the shadow to go? How far away do I want it? Like that's way too much, obviously. <laughs> do I want it like right below it? Do I want it to go spread out more? Or just be like a little bit. So you can adjust all of these things. You can even change like the color. I mean, there's tons of things you can do. So I'm really digging on that one. I'm going to hit OK. Let me look around um, for this um, layer with a heart. And let me try these some of these different things too. Eh, I don't really like that on that. Nope, don't like that. Maybe. Yes. So drop shadow where is where it's at for me for that. So maybe I have it come out a little bit more. Yeah, I like that a lot. I wonder what inner shadow looks like. No, I don't like that. Okay, so I have a little bit of drop shadow on both, so it kind of makes sense together. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, so there's my, um, my letter kind of telling me what my face card is. Here's my pip, so it's actually a flower. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and make a duplicate layer and flip them over. So I'm going to choose both by holding down shift. So I'm going to choose my flower that's already chosen. This is my flower right here. And I'm going to hold down shift and choose my queue. And then I'm going to right click and hit duplicate layer. And it'll duplicate both of them, right? See, it's copy. And then I'm going to go to my move tool. I'm going to move them over here. I want them to be down here, though, and I want them to flip. So let me go over to edit, transform, flip vertically. And see how I just put it on both sides? Now notice my flower down here though is in front of, or it's behind my picture. So I just have to make sure that this picture is back here. So I just have to move that layer so my flower is in front. And the only thing I'm noticing is my shadow goes this way and I kind of want it to go that way. So I'm gonna go back to that layer. Yep. And I'm gonna adjust my drop shadow to go the other direction. Oh, it changes them all. Hmm. Tricky. Maybe I'll kind of have them towards the middle then. All right, so I have flowers in my design. I have flower for my pip. I can see that it's queen of hearts. Um, I think I want to put a few more flowers on here just because it fits with what's happening. So I'm going to take this flower copy here, and I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to then click on my move tool and move it. Oops, not that. Hold on, hold on. That was at 600. Sorry about that. I just want to move this guy. Where is he? Over here. Okay. 
And I want to bring a flower into my design. So I want to bring the hearts into my design somewhere. So I'm going to resize this. Make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to copy and paste it. So I just did control C, control V. Edit. And flip it. And then move it. So I have one on either side. So I worked my kind of my heart design. I still kept it symmetrical, but I have it like as part of this too. But I think I want to bring in just a few more flowers. So let me see what else we have for flowers. I mean, this one's kind of cool, but with all of these watermarks on it, I don't think I would use it. Because it just takes too much time to get rid of the watermarks using the cloning tool. I don't think I want to do that. I mean, I think it's just something simple like this, just some simple flowers would be fun. Let me try just roses in general. Let's do like rose with water. Oh, yes, these are cool. All right, I'm going to take this one here. Oh, it's kind of small, and you can already see it's pixelated. Nope. Let me go up and make sure I'm choosing large ones. I like the look of it, but if I try to select it, it's not going to select right. And this one's really cool, but I don't have the whole flower. So I'm going to go with this one. Yeah. Right click, copy image, come back over here, edit and paste. And I'm going to move this to the top so I can see it without that other little flower in there. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can see what I'm working with. And I want to just choose my rose. So I'm just going to use my lasso tool. Let me see. I wonder if maybe we can try to select it. Let's see if quick selection works. I don't know. It's tricky. There's a lot of values in this. Oh, it did a pretty good job. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this little extra. Go to my lasso tool. Hold on the Alt key. If you're on a Chromebook, I think it's the K key that you have to hold down. And I'm holding down Alt. And I'm just selecting this extra part that I don't want. And removing it from the selection, that looks pretty good to me. I'm missing that petal there, but I'm fine with that. All right, so it's selected the flower. I'm going to go up to select and select inverse, and then hit the delete button. And I have just that flower now. So I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to resize it. Hold down shift. So I just want some more flowers in here. I think I'm going to rotate it too. I'm going to put some extra flowers. I think I might play around with the colors, too, just to kind of get it to work with what's already happening. Ooh, the green one's kind of cool. I'm just going to go slightly orange with it. Bring down the saturation. Maybe boost the lightness a little bit. That way it fits in a little bit better with what's happening here. I'm going to make a few more copies, I think. Edit and resize it. Things always look good in odd numbers. So if you do like three of something, or if you do like um, five, or just one. So try to stay away from... Um, even numbers. All right, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. We'll make this one even lighter. Saturation a little bit more, I think. Just kind of playing around with it. And I'll do one more. Make sure I'm on my move tool. And I'm going to rotate this one. It's going a little bit different direction. And I think it might, might look good if these have some shadow on them like the other things do. So let me see if I can do this. We'll try it again. The drop shadow. There we go. And make sure that there's a drop shadow on that one. And 
can put a drop shadow on this one too. All right, so just to make sure that it's reflected on the other side, I'm gonna take these three, hold down shift and choose all three of them. I'm gonna go up and do a duplicate layer and then go up to the top and go to transform and flip vertically and then make sure I'm on my move tool and move them down here. And I'm gonna flip them horizontally too. All right, so if I look at the requirements, I've got my letter here, I've got my pip. Now this one, my pip is actually like a picture. So it's a heart here. I've got a heart rose kind of happening inside with my roses and I added a few extra roses on it. And you saw I did a different uh, filter effect. Again, there's all of these options that you can play around with when you're working on your project. So there's lots of different things that you can test out and try. Okay, so once you're done, always do the same process of going up here, save as a PSD. Remember a PSD has our layers on it. So whenever you open it, it'll have the layers again. And when you start to get a lot of layers on here, it's always a good practice just to go in and start to label them just so you can keep track of what's what. But now that I have this downloaded, I'm gonna go up to Google, make sure I'm logged into my drive, and I'm gonna upload what I just did. So I'm gonna go to new, file upload, Everything's moving kind of slow. Wait for it to show up on the top here. There it is. I'll hit open and I'll save it to my drive as a backup. That doesn't wait. It doesn't matter what computer I'm on. I still have it in my Google Drive. And then I'll come back to my project, go to file, and I'll go to save or export as, I'm sorry, a JPEG, JPG, and then hit the save button. And it's always good also to just turn off your guides at the end and see what it looks like and see if you really like the layout of everything, you know, because sometimes the guides kind of like affect what we're looking at. So I'm pretty happy with this. I could do some more things to it, but I think I'm pretty happy with this right now. So each week, what you're going to do is turn in a different playing card. You choose, you know, what, uh, which card you want to do but you want to make sure that the theme is the same. So somehow either the visual of it, the design of it, um, whatever you chose for your subject matter, the theme should be the same or you should be able to connect them in some way. Okay, so each week you'll do a different card and we'll do four cards. All right, anybody have any questions? I'm gonna come back to you guys. Anybody have any questions?